We're here at Google I.O. 2023, and the big news of the day is the Google Pixel Fold, the first foldable phone from Google, and it's a lot like a Pixel you already know. This is Google's first attempt at a foldable phone, and this is a young market, and Google is trying to get its foot into the door to fight against Samsung, which is currently the market leader across the board. Now, Google doesn't have the best track record when it comes to first-gen products. You only need to look as far back as the Pixel Watch, which came out last year. The Pixel Watch was a great looking timepiece, but it had awful battery life, and that made it hard to recommend. Is the Pixel Fold going to have some sort of big Achilles heel that's gonna prevent it from being the market dominator that Google hopes it will be? Thankfully, one of the best things about the Pixel when I first held it in my hand is that it looks and feels like a Pixel. Over the past few years, Google has sort of toyed with different design elements and different ways of making their phones look unique on the market. And it didn't really hit its stride until the Pixel 6. And then the Pixel 7 and the Pixel 6a and Pixel 7a all kind of tie into that one uh, you know, design language. And the Pixel Fold fits right into that. And that might seem insignificant, but it's actually really important because that's the kind of thing that's going to separate Google from its main competitors around the world. And if Google can tie in the way the Pixel looks and feels into the broader ecosystem of Pixels, that's going to be advantageous. It's going to make it so that people see that phone and say to themselves, that's a Pixel. Now, Google's main competitor in this space is Samsung with the Galaxy Z Fold 4. But the Pixel Fold is a very different phone. It's thinner, it's shorter, it's wider. It's just a whole different design. And it's gonna come down to your own subjective opinion, whether or not you think that that's better or worse than what Samsung is doing. In my opinion though, I love it. The Google Pixel Fold looks a lot more like the Oppo Find N than it does like the Galaxy Z Fold 4. Uh, but not, it, it doesn't feel the same. It doesn't feel like it's just a rehash of what Oppo already did. It feels like something new and something fresh, but it's certainly much more similar to the Find N than anything from Samsung. Now, when you unfold the Pixel Fold, it is super, super thin. It is not the thinnest foldable we've ever seen. That belongs to the Surface Duo 2. But remember, the Surface Duo 2 does not have a foldable inner display. So it kind of cheated there. But the Pixel Fold is only 0.03 millimeters thicker than the Surface Duo 2. So we're talking very, very thin. If you're one of those people who's very, very concerned about the crease down the middle of the phone when you unfold it, I'm sorry to say that, as you've probably seen on the screen now, there still is a crease there. I thought the crease was more apparent than I had remembered seeing on the Galaxy Z Fold 4, but obviously it's not really easy to measure that kind of thing. But if you're thinking that the Pixel Fold has solved the crease problem, I've got some bad news for you, it did not. Now, of course, this could be a thing that you could just ignore. Uh, there are plenty of people out there with foldable phones who don't really care much about the crease, and there are people that really, really do care. So you're gonna have to figure out which camp you're in and then figure out whether or not the Pixel Fold is for you. The hinge itself, though, feels pretty good. I don't think it's quite as refined as what Samsung has done, but it is smooth and it stops at pretty much any angle that you want, which is really cool because you can do interesting things like tenting the fold on the table so it makes like a little triangle. That's perfect for watching YouTube videos, or you can do it in the stand-up mode where it's flat and you actually have controls for certain apps on the bottom half of the screen and then the video player on the top half. Could be really convenient for a lot of different functions such as watching YouTube videos, uh, doing uh, photography, or many more things that Google probably hasn't even thought of yet. Unfortunately, one of the coolest things that we saw at Google I.O. 2023 as it relates to the Pixel Fold was the dual screen interpreter mode. And this was really, really cool. It basically enables you to have text on the back display of the Pixel Fold show translated text of what you're saying so that somebody standing in front of you can read it in real time. This is gonna make it so that you can actually have a conversation directly face to face with someone who doesn't speak your language and be able to communicate in real time and it's gonna be really cool. Unfortunately, Google made a big deal about this on stage at Google I.O. 2023, uh, but did not show it to us and we were not able to use it. So you're gonna to have to wait until this finally rolls out before we'll be able to give our full hands-on demo of how this is going to work. Another major selling point of the Pixel Fold is of course the camera. 
when it comes to pixels, the camera is the star. The camera is the biggest feature of any Pixel phone, and we expect the Pixel Fold to fall in line there. The hardware all lines up, but we weren't able to test out the photography prowess of this camera quite yet. Hopefully we'll be able to do that really soon, but you can stay tuned for a full review where we'll show you how well the camera stacks up against other pixels and obviously how well it stacks up against other foldable phones. Remember that Google on stage said that the Pixel Fold is going to have the best camera of any foldable phone ever. And those are big words. Finally, we have to talk about the elephant in the room, which is the price. At $1,799, that's $1,799 US dollars, the Pixel Fold is exactly the same price as the Galaxy Z Fold 4. I think personally that this was a mistake. I think that Google should have undercut Samsung rather than meet it at that same price. Google's got to get its foot in the door here. Samsung has had four generations of foldable phones to cement its standing in the market. And Google is now entering that market a little late. If Google wants to convince buyers not to buy a Galaxy Z Fold 4, they should have dropped the price a little bit. However, Google is gonna do what Google does and $1799 is the introductory price for this phone. And if you wanna get the 512 gigabyte version, you're gonna spend $1,919. That is nearly $2,000 for a first gen foldable phone from Google. Is it gonna be what you want? I don't know. After using the Pixel Fold for a little while here at Google I.O., I really felt that Google really hit this out of the park. Now, that doesn't mean that I think that I'm going to buy it, and it doesn't mean that I think you should buy it. It just means that for a first-gen product from Google, I was incredibly impressed with what they've done here. I was expecting something to be, you know, not great, and it ended up being actually very, very impressive. Time will tell whether or not Google can transfer that excitement that we have right now for the Pixel Fold into people actually buying the Pixel Fold. But from where I'm standing, I think Google is off to a great start. It's just gonna be up to us, the buyers, to figure out whether or not it's gonna win. I'm C. Scott Brown from Android Authority, and this has been my Pixel Fold hands-on. You can like and subscribe us. I never do this, I never know what to say. What, what did I say? Like and subscribe. Like See you in the next video. Yeah, the bill like I never do this. Okay, yeah.